Hey y'all, Todd here with a real quick tutorial on how to set up Reason. I'm using Reason 8, but this works for Reason 7 and 6, I think, as well, in order to rewire them into Ableton. This is a blank Reason file that I opened up. It comes with these devices that we're not going to use. I'm going to delete them, just add a few patches. three combinators. From there I'm going to make sure that the master out that was going into the interface for the audio that reason pushing out to whatever is gone and instead going to change excuse me route these instrument combinators this mix bar if you will in the master section the direct out the audio from that instrument I'm going to send it to reason channel one and you don't have to but I usually space these out so that as I want to kind of group them like I've got this is a, a synth by Ian McIntosh this Hercules lead is a synth by Chris Gala and this Rhodes combi I have no idea where that came from but nonetheless um, if I've got maybe another Rhodes I want to run in this same file now I'll just put those in channels 19 to 20 and kind of keep them grouped by the type of instrument these first two are synth so I could almost do one two three four but I'll leave it like this to make it easier in routing once I get into Ableton I usually rename these patches to include the channel number that I had routed them to within reason and you'll see why in a second Rhodes uh, Ian 1 2 he, Hercules 9 10 Rhodes 18 19 uh, that's all we pretty much need to do in reason for now unless of course you want to do your own sound design and tweak it and all that stuff but we can do a lot of that in Ableton which is what I plan to do save that file now typically that would be done with Ableton closed but I have it open so you need to open live first then open that reason file it has to be done in that order in order for the rewire protocol to work so here's my Ableton live folder file rather uh, stock template I'm gonna go into instruments and drag in an external instrument into ch MIDI channel 1 I'm going to change the MIDI from to whatever keyboard I want to control this instrument. I'm going to change the MIDI to here. Reason. I'm going to send the MIDI signal that I'm getting from my key lab to Reason to the Ian combinator. From that combinator, it's going to produce the sound in Reason and send it to what? Channels 1, 2 in Reason. And that's where we're going to grab them. So if I press on keyboard, get blown away. There we go. Sorry about that. Hopefully I'll fix that in post-production and video software. Nonetheless, uh, let's duplicate this a couple times. And I'm going to go in here and leave it as my key lab. But I'm going to change it to the actual channels that I had set up. Excuse me, instruments, the Hercules 910. See why I named it 910? So I don't have to go back into Reason, click on it, turn it around, hit K for cleanup, expand the audio, and see. Oh, where did I route that sucker? Uh, 910. That's where it's going. Instead of having to do all that craziness, I know where it's going, and I can change it right here. 910. And this one, let's change this instrument to the Rhodes 1718. And let's grab audio from 1718. In order not to overload the CPU, instead of disarming the channels here so that you don't get this audio from Ableton, as you can see the signal is coming in from Reason. They're just disarmed, so if I arm it, you'll hear it. Instead of doing that, and as you can see in Reason, when I hit the keyboard, all three 
combinators are receiving MIDI signal. To avoid that, recently at a Patches Live event, we'll dog it, whoop whoop, Ian McIntosh, Peter James, that's what I'm talking about, um, learned from them this weekend that it's much smarter and better to map this power button right here on the external instrument to a controller of some type. And I've got my Livid controller, so I'm going to go ahead and map these buttons. Click on the channel, click on the external instrument, map that button, and map this button. While I'm in here, I know I'm going to want these faders mapped also, so I'll go ahead and map those to the same faders that are right above the buttons that I just mapped. If you want, you can come over here in the MIDI section and control for this track volume, I don't ever want it to be less than whatever, or I don't want it to be ever more than unity and put it at zero. I don't think that helps from peeking it out, but I kind of just leave it and play, just listen to my ear and watch for the red spikes on the channel strip. So um, there we go. Let's arm those channels back. Let's undo the record. I'm going to turn off all of the instruments, hit my keyboard, nothing. Arm the first one. There we go. That is the ENMGT. I'm going to unarm the first one, arm the second. That is that Hercules lead. As you can see, it's on. I'm going to turn it off. Off. And let's go to the roads and arm it. There we go. Armed it. From there, I'm going to grab one of these stock audio channels and just roll it up on over here. Rename it to Synth Bus. And I'm going to take the audio from here. Instead of sending it to the master, I'm going to send it to this bus channel. And for this synth, I'm going to send it to this bus channel. That was really loud. That clipped out. Sorry about that. Should have no audio input so my mic doesn't freak it out and blow my monitors. Which I hope it didn't do. But now that we have this bus channel, when I send any MIDI signal from this channel, you can tell it's going to the bus. And now that bus can tell it where to go on what channels for my audio interface but I don't want to send it to external out I want to keep it to master and I better kill this before that again freak grabs my mic and overloads my system so that's my synth bus from there you can do whatever effects you want on that bus or on these individual channels I often will take an auto filter and throw it on these, particularly on the synths, and map that frequency to a, a knob on my controller. Right here and right here. And I usually like to bring my cue up a little bit. Got to wait, turn that off, bring that up a little, and bring this one up a little. Now, when I Move the knob on my controller, it's controlling that frequency. That channel is armed. Hit the keyboard, bring the volume up, roll the filter back. And there you go. Um, that's about it for this one. Till next time.